Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuam, and today I'm going to have an interesting conversation with Melissa, a professional vocalist from Mexico. Let me check also who is in the chat and whether Melissa is already here or not. I say hi to everyone. Welcome here. Hello, how are you doing? So I'm waiting for Melissa to join the chat so that we can get it started. Yes, I say hi to everyone. Welcome. So by any minute, uh, Melissa will join us. Yes, there she is. Uh, let me invite her. Send the request. So now I'm waiting for Melissa to accept it. Hey, Melissa, how are Hello. you doing? Hello, hola. <laughs> I'm doing well, very good. By the way, and do I pronounce it? your oh. name correctly? Melissa, right? Yes, yes, it's Melissa. It's just a, a fun way to spell it, but we say Melissa anyway. <laughs> Yeah, there's an extra edge there. Is it for uh, common in Mexico or you just add it? No, I did. And because I have two names, I'm Cynthia, Melissa. So I took the Y and the H from Cynthia and put them in Melissa. Oh, I see what <laughs> <Ta -da>! you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Well, I'm so excited about talking. To yeah, I, I was uh, looking forward to it. And uh, how is everything in Mexico, by the way? everything everything or <laughs> well right now the weather is very hot it's november and we're very hot it's hermosillo of course my town is in the northwest and we are in the desert part so it is not a surprise but yeah we were expecting cooler <laughs> cooler weather and no it's not look at me i'm not wearing <laughs> much <laughs> i see we have the same situation in cyprus it's usually uh, very hot but it's getting colder these days, fortunately. Mm -hmm. And I understood you had an, uh, another interview today. How was it? Yeah, earlier. And you were there for a few minutes, yes. And yeah, it you went saw well. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning, I had a few internet problems, but I think it's all fixed by now. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. And you have also updated your Instagram today. Yeah, I mean, uh, it didn't ask me before. It's like I knew because somebody complained in one of the stories. I saw that one of my contacts was complaining. Oh, I hated the new, <laughs> the new <laughs> update. So I was not really looking forward to any updates. But it seemed like I couldn't have any live transmissions without the newest version. But, well... <laughs> It went well anyway. I haven't really went to all to see all the buttons and new things. I only see like it's a bigger, like it's yeah, zoom uh, in on many things. I was things. confused when I wanted to invite you and it was a little confusing at first, but I think it got better because as you said, the items got larger as I can notice. Yeah, it's like my, my profile, uh, page in yeah that, that's the main thing that the font the font and many things are bigger so the pictures look smaller i'm not really sure <laughs> i'm not really sure if there's any other change yeah so melissa would you please uh, tell us about yourself and your band oh well <laughs> um well let me see where where i can start and first of all well i am melissa and i am a solo project i'm a singer of course i have musicians and it looks like a band from the outside, but it's really a solo project. I get, I do, I do get help from my producer, who is my guitar player. And, but mainly the songs, I write them. I write the songs, the melodies. And after that, we go and see what is the correct music, the arrangement for each one of the songs. And so far, I've... I've released five singles. I have been releasing them uh, periodically. <laughs> but yes, um, every single one is a single. I mean, they are not uh, to complete an album. No, I mean, each one of them, I put all my effort. And I, they have a video, they have a photo shoot. I did spend some time, like, um, 
for the release, I did have concerts here and there. Not in the, la in the newest one, of course. It, it, my newest single I released it this month, on November 13th. And, well, it has been going well on the, on the media. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the, the music platforms and our, our social media, per se, because we are, uh, like many other bands, I am, and, and my, my friends, my team, we are independent musicians. So, um, yes, we don't count with the support of a record company or a, a label, so yes, we do everything, <laughs> and when we are just experimenting, and we'll always welcome the help from all the fans, and also people like you supporting supporting musicians that uh, give us the time to talk about our mus music and well to get to be known in other places. <laughs> so yes, it's metal. It's metal. Uh, we could say probably alternative metal. And they, they, all my influences, they, they, they did, <laughs> they did something so that you can hear like a special combination. And when did you I, exactly I, start uh, just composing music? Well, <laughs> writing music, it, it, it started so long ago. I mean, I, I really, really, I start counting the time when I released my first single, which was 2016. But of course, by the time I released the song, I had been writing a re uh, like error and <laughs> like first like writing until I finally liked what I was writing. So that was many years before that. And then I did take uh, some music, music lessons, theory and, and then my singing, my singing coach and stuff. I didn't go to a conservatory, but I did take many private lessons. And today I still take some online courses. And um, I think it's something that you must never stop doing, which is perfecting your instrument, <laughs> of course, because it also if you stop practicing, it gets it's like <laughs> rusty. <laughs> so yeah, I need uh, I needed help uh, from my teachers, and then I felt more ready. So my compositions, I did, I did fix some of them. I did improve some of my songs. Actually, some of them were in English at the beginning, but I decided that my project, since I live in Mexico and I was moving in Mexico, and I had to to adjust. So most of my songs. Be well, were transformed, and now everything is in Spanish. I'm, I still don't know when, but probably in the future, yes, I can, <laughs> I can show you music in English. Right now, if you want to hear me singing in English, you can go to my YouTube account or here on my IGTV. I have some covers. I have some covers, and, but my original songs in English are still unveiled. <laughs> so they're still in secret. It was private, actually but, very uh, interesting yeah. for me that uh, you were singing in Spanish because it was new to me. I know there are some bands in Mexico and many uh, Latino countries, but still that was what uh, interesting for me and uh, <laughs> special. But what do you describe as the special thing in your band that this is different from uh, other music bands? Well, first of all, uh, that I don't want to get, how do you call it, when it's like I don't want to limit myself and only be classified as metal. I mean, it's free. I like rock. I like the distort, distorted guitars. I like uh, strings and the keyboards and stuff. So I love a uh, powerful music. But... If there is a song that I feel like it needs to be more like more rock rock or less like it just alternative rock it depends it depends on, on the intention of my song I am open to do that so uh, you will you you might especially with the new songs that are coming you might get to hear that it's not all the same it's like oh probably I thought this was only metal but now i hear there's uh, a different it's hard for me to to describe the genre it's like oh she's just uh, progressive or she's uh super hard for me <laughs> because so depending, depending on the person yes yeah. yeah, depending on the person you might say 
I'm a super dark pop or a very live rock metal, I don't know, so it depends, and depends of course on your perception and that it's okay, as long as you, you get to hear um, all the composition and hopefully if you feel identified with, uh, probably you won't understand in your case, you won't understand my lyrics in Spanish, but the music, the music, I was telling Vibs from Powerlift, I was telling her music is another language. So probably even it, it has happened to me that I like uh, music in other languages. Uh, sometimes I don't understand the lyrics, but the music, it gives you the feeling, emotions, and it helps you express. It helps you express other things. They say things that cannot be expressed with words. <laughs> yeah, so the music uh, is going to be art our vehicle to do that and uh, well the people that is interested in learning Spanish can also use my songs to practice <laughs> yeah that's wonderful uh, that's exactly what I'm doing by the way <laughs> I'm listening oh, to great. The Spanish songs <laughs> just because of that and uh, I say hi to everyone who are joining us Richard hola Diaz, hola hello Yusha, everyone hey listening. vive son hi. hair it's from Hermosillo my town yeah <laughs> very nice and thank by the way, you, you so know much. Russian you know Russian. Well, I have studied. That. I have studied many years here in my town. So what I really need to to say, I am a, an accomplished Russian student, is to go to Russia, probably spend a couple of months there, and defend myself with the language. I have had conversations, and uh, here I had two wonderful Russian teachers. Now I don't have anyone to practice it with. Probably you want to help me. Minya zavod Melissa. And I have some fans here that uh, they speak Russian, but uh, it is difficult. It is difficult to find people to practice in Mexico, for example. And so I use Duolingo. <laughs> we were talking about that app as well. I use Duolingo. It is funny because it's so insisting every day. <laughs> it's telling you, hey, hey, you're missing your practice of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, come on, I'm busy. <laughs> and but where yeah. were you exactly in Russia? In Moscow? Where exactly what? No, I have never been there. Uh, I, I was... Uh, all the time I studied, I was here. My, my teachers, one of the teachers was from St. Petersburg, mm. the other from Manapa. So, uh, but I really like the language. I, I like learning languages. So what I do is I listen to a lot of music. I, lo I watch TV shows. Many times I try to read articles. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> but yes, mainly listening to music. My love for music has always helped me with the languages. At first, when I was a child, I would only listen to music in Spanish. And then, uh, as I started liking music in English, that's where my love for the language uh, started. I mean, music was already in me, but I, I opened myself to learn other languages because the music drawn me to, to that. And, well, uh, as a daytime job, I am, a, I am an English teacher. Yeah, that's wonderful. And what other languages do you know, by the way? Well, my, my native language is Spanish. Many people think that we speak Mexican. Well, it's Spanish. <laughs> There's no Mexican language. Yeah. We speak Spanish. I studied English, as you can hear, and Russian. Uh, I, I did learn one semester of German, but you know one semester is almost nothing. So I want to continue learning it. <laughs> yeah, German language is also very beautiful. Many people just think this is a brutal language, but this is very cute, actually. And uh, I you are also so, yeah. doing uh, roller skating. Would you tell us? I about? love roller skating. That's <laughs> one of the things I learned when I was a child. And it is fun for me. Well, curious. It's curious to, to realize that many of the things I love right now, I, I came to know them when I was a child. I mean, music, for example, I was uh, singing. And I had uh, guitar lessons when I was a child. So I had music, I had roller skating, a little bit of bicycle <laughs> riding, and also I always loved dressing up. Right now, I, whenever I have the chance, I do cosplay. <laughs> so whenever I also, whenever I have concerts, I love the process of, okay, I'm going to dress up and I can 
go over the top because it's for the concert. It doesn't matter. And I'm not afraid of going outside. I feel nervous sometimes. It's like, oh, do I look... I look very strange, <laughs> but it's also part of the, the thing I like. It's like, well, who cares? I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so, yes, all of, the, all of those things, I already knew them as a child. So right now, when I am a teacher of children, I, I many, many times I think it's like they, already, they, they should already know what they're going to be when, when they grow up, right? Because many of the things they are starting to love right now, they will, they, will, they will stay with them even if they grow. It is sad, it is sad, right? When we have to leave everything that we liked or that we enjoyed because of school, because, you know, we need money. <laughs> and fortunately, even though, even though I, I work a lot and I had to study, I can continue to dedicate myself to music I can say I did have to, to wait a long time to, to actually do what I wanted to do because uh, it's, it was until I, I had a job, I had money, so that I could invest on my own recordings, on my music lessons, again, as an adult, because I, I, needed, I wanted to prepare myself, and uh, I did it until I was in an age that I felt I can do it, and I don't need anyone to do it for me I mean I'm gonna do it myself and and we should do it like that it, it, it is like oh as they say you have to believe in yourself so do it <laughs> do it if you're there if you wanna if you have a, an idea you wanna start a project but you, you feel that you're not ready you should start anyway you will get ready in the process <laughs> yeah any projects that you want to start these days no matter what's the topic uh, you need to start with <laughs> yourself is yes. it? because mm -hmm. you cannot just wait for a perfect band just to propose to you to say okay, exactly yeah, so. I did search I did search for a lot of bands because in the beginning I did have like the idea that you need a band and I, I was in garage bands here and locally but uh, usually they had their own their own project it's like they had their lyrics they had their songs there was no space for uh, for us to 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 also contribute so i decided okay i need my own and it was so hard to find people willing to do your project they wanted to do their project it's like well everyone has their own ideas we have a lot of talented people here but uh, in the moment of getting together uh, you, it's like sometimes you do your projects, sometimes you help others, and uh, even uh, as I have my project right now, um, well, we, we're we're many friends. Uh, it's like a circle of friends that got together, and one of them, they, he put his studio, and then they started recording. We started promoting ourselves, everything independently. So sometimes when they need a backup, backup singer in the recordings, I help them and they help me, or in the shooting of videos, uh, I am in their videos, they are in my videos, or they are behind, you don't know, but the one holding the lights <laughs> was the singer of this other band, because uh, sometimes it has to be like that, and it is better when it's friends, and the, we do it because we like to do it, and not just because I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah, the key is to just to start creating and continue until you reach your goal. That's how it works these days. And uh, unfortunately, after COVID, uh, we have more collaboration <laughs> between, uh, between musicians. That's wonderful. Well, yes, even, I mean, musicians never stopped, right? It's like we continued uh, sometimes doing covers, online concerts, or just uh, writing. Not everyone got to have so much free time. I thought that I was going to have so much free time, but I didn't. <laughs> and uh, my teaching got, uh, to, it became online. Uh, fortunately, I still have an income, so I continue working. But yes, I thought, I thought that I was going to have a lot of time for writing music, which I didn't. Uh, at least I, sometimes I, I can practice. I can say... This year I have uh, relaxed, so it's like I didn't force my voice as much as other years in which I'm teaching and in the afternoon I, I got to go to record a song, but I, I have been uh, talking all the morning or sometimes yelling at kids. <laughs> so it's like this year has been, well, 
more peaceful, you could say, for my voice. I did rest a lot. And when I had to sing for my online concerts, well, I did. I did pre rehearse. I did I do prepare. I, I do some vocal warm-ups. But yes, uh, some of my friends were more uh, active in the cover, <laughs> doing making covers. So I, I did participate here and there. I posted two cover songs this year. I don't know if you can see me. Sometimes I see the, <laughs> the connection. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's cool. okay now, yes. Um, but I had two, two cover songs I, I uploaded and then two online concerts. I think one is, the, one is on YouTube only. But uh, I just released the single, and well, even though on the outside it might seem like, well, you haven't been working very much, uh, all the things that have been on the on the background uh, are the preparation for what is coming. Hopefully, well, here in my town, uh, concerts are not a how do you say well open again, and <laughs> they're not they're not uh, they haven't come in they have. They're not, <laughs> they haven't been back. Uh, as I see that in other places in Europe, they are having concerts again, but not here in Mexico. Little by little, they are opening bars and stuff, but not, not the music industry, not yet. So probably in 2021, uh, I will start to see more movement in that area. If not, at least I have a plan. I mean, they, I have the single, and then there's a lyric video coming soon then the official video, and then another single, <laughs> and so and so, because I recorded uh, the songs before the, the, the beginning of the quarantine. So right now I don't have to worry about the recording of the music, only probably the shooting of the, <laughs> the, the single photo and the videos. I have to think what's going to happen in the next video. Do you recommend anything? <laughs> I don't know. I should see the topic, <laughs> then we will see. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, well, the video right now, the song I, I released, uh, well, I can translate it for you. It, it's, it talks about the this these sad feelings that you can have sometimes, nostalgia, uh, about a, a specific time in your life. It could be a person or a moment, but uh, I did think of a, of a moment in, in all the people that was with me in that moment, all the people that were with me, and um, the time time passed. It it changed everyone in my memory. I can still remember them, and even if I got to see them right now, well, they are not the same. So so it's like this memory of these people. They only exist in my mind now. So it's like in the chorus, what I say is, I wish that everything could be as it was before. Uh, I'll never forget you, stuff like that. <laughs> so actually, that's what it's, it, actually, it is. I think you uh, asked the right person because most probably you know that I'm a writer. So I write uh, this story about these things too. So later maybe we can oh. talk about it and we will yeah, have a Yeah, excellent. <laughs> very, very well, yes. Yes, and I'd love to. Do you to. have any favorite bands in Mexico? In Mexico, yes. I love, uh, there are some bands, uh, Actually, maybe the names are in English, but they sing in Spanish. Driven, Las Nebula. No, they did Las Nebula sings in English. Uh, Ana Banza, they sing in Spanish. Uh, Ana Fiori, she's another solo project. And um, uh, it's like I went blank, right? But, but those are the, <laughs> the main ones I remember right now. And there are, there are many actually on my Spotify. Sometimes I share them here. But on my Spotify, I did some playlists uh, of female-fronted bands, mainly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they are like four. So I did not in all... I mean, they are not only Mexican bands, but I, on the first three, I was focusing on only music in Spanish. Then the last one is, is in English. But um, it is... It, I mean, I, even though I found a lot... I didn't find I didn't find as many <laughs> as as male fronted bands. It's like it's like they say no, it's the same. No, it's not the same. There are not as many female fronted bands as male fronted bands. And um, well, it's increasing. also, yes, yes, it is good to see. It is good to see that uh, they keep working and they go out there. People get to find them, and I am glad that 
somehow I can help. So I included them in my playlist. Sometimes I here I can share their their pages, and I am doing a list of all the of all the female in bands that I I have found, uh, so that I can later on contact them. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea to have collaboration with them, no matter exactly, in which country yeah. they are. But uh, we mentioned about uh, Russian language. Uh, do you follow <laughs> any uh, Russian bands, maybe? Yes, I do. Uh, well, I follow different genres of music, but uh, like in a, probably a, um, what is that? New metal, for example, Slot. Do you like Slot <laughs> or do you know them? Okay, that's Actually, a band. Actually, I usually Slow. follow Russian pop, not Russian rock. Um, that's why maybe... It's, it's more common, it's more common. Uh, in the pop, I love Bitba. I don't know if you like Bitba. Uh, one uh, more uh, like... That's rock also. Yeah, but, but depends. I mean, yeah. the other one is harder. Yes, Bitba is like rock pop sometimes. And then uh, I love Lube. Lube is more like more national rock. Yeah. Uh, Lube, DDT, um, ah, Zviri, Zviri, I like, I like them. And other pop uh, singers like uh, Polina Gagarina. Yeah, Polina. Uh, they, has, they also has have a, a band voice. with a funny name, Viagra. <laughs> so there are many, yes. many bands. Viagra is and very I, old, but yeah. they are keep updating the members. I know. <laughs> I know. In the Russian uh, public, you notice usually they keep changing their members again and again. Maybe each year they have new members. It's very hard for them to keep the members in the same group. I don't know why exactly, but that's the case. Well, sometimes it's because one of them goes on solo. And I, ha I have seen that one of them got very popular, Vera Vrishneva. Vera Vrishneva. I don't yes, know if you know friend. her. Shh. So yes, she was in Viagra and now she's a solo artist and she's doing well, so good for her. <laughs> so sometimes it happens uh, here in Mexico too, but not as, not as often. There was a band in Biriche, for example, that they started as children. It was like a children band and they started growing, growing, growing as teenagers. Some of them left, but instead of stopping the project, they just <laughs> uh, replaced them with others. Little by little, there was only one that got uh, there, that they got to be there forever. <laughs> all of them, all of the others got outside of the band. So, and now, nowadays, they do their re reunions, <laughs> but with the original members only. Yeah, yeah and uh, during uh, today, I asked the followers that uh, if they have any questions from you, and some, uh, <laughs> oh, one you're of them mentioning actually, the bands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of them uh, asked an interesting question about uh, Latino series, because uh, oh. <laughs> most probably <laughs> she's uh, watching them. Uh, do you have any favorite <laughs> Latino series? I really, mm, I'm not following any at the moment. Usually, um, I watch the American shows or the. British shows, uh, but if, if you want me to mention a Latino one, uh, the last one I watched, and it was because of my mom, <laughs> it was La Reina del Sur, <laughs> and it was about this woman who gets involved in the um, uh, drug dealing <laughs> business <laughs> by accident, and I, was, I didn't finish watching it because it was on Sunday mornings, and I was like, oh, I need to sleep, <laughs> but my mom did finish watching it. <laughs> Other shows I love watching more than, it's because, uh, because of my schedule and my life uh, rhythm, uh, is, uh, I watch Netflix mainly, so I watch the, the things that get to be there. Uh, I like to watch shows from Spain. One of them was the Ministry of Time, Ministerio del Tiempo. I think it's no longer in, in Netflix, but I watched it as it was there and I loved it because it was about time traveling. They were trying to rescue the history of Spain. So whenever somebody threatened, even there was an episode in which they talk about somebody that was going to, to discover America before Christopher Columbus. <laughs> so, so it's like there are other time travelers doing stuff to change the history and they are in charge of fixing it. <laughs> I see. And uh, I used to watch El Nombre del Amor and also El Cuerpo del Deseo. Do you know them? Are they, are they Mexican? I think so, yeah. I th yeah, I think they are sub-operas, right? Like telenovelas. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, and yes. They were really I, nice. the, the, only, the only telenovelas I watched, uh, I watched were when on TV when I was a child. Because as a child, uh, you watch whatever people is watching in your house, <laughs> usually. So I did watch many from Thalia. I don't know if you know that actress, Thalia. Maybe Thalia, by face Thalia. I know, most probably. Yeah, she was in Maria Mercedes, Maria La del Barrio, uh, Marimar, <laughs> many, many. So she had many soap operas. Also, before that, I watched another Muchachitas. <laughs> Muchachitas, it was like the little girls. Um, but then, then other, uh, other soap operas became more popular, like the ones from Venezuela, Colombia. But you know what's the thing right now? The thing in Mexico is the... Turkish soap operas right now. Really? My mom, my mom watches a lot of, on wow. the open TV, not on the cable TV, on the open TV, they are airing a lot, a lot of Turkish uh, soap operas. I don't know if you should call them telenovelas or soap operas, but yes, many from Turkey, they are um, translated to Spanish here and everyone is watching them. So it's, it is like... I talk only uh, in Italy, yeah. so crazy about this uh, Turkish series. No, Mexico too. It is, as I tell you, it's on the open TV, so most people can watch them. So uh, what I can see is that all the all these actresses are so beautiful. It's like, oh, really? Are they, are they all like that in Turkey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where exactly um, is Cyprus? Cyprus? Sorry about my geography. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. In the Mediterranean Sea, it, in the eastern uh, part, we could say. And it's in the mm -hmm. southern part of Turkey and in the middle of uh, Turkey and Greece, we could say. Because uh, okay. in the northern okay. region of Cyprus, uh, Turkish people live mostly and in the southern part, Greek people. Mm. And it's divided oh. since about 35 years ago, for example, or 37 years ago. Uh, it's divided. It's very really a small country, but still it's divided. Now. <laughs> Every, okay. It's a pity. And what is the, the official language there? Uh, the official language is Turkish and uh, Greece. Where but, you live? Uh, where, where I live uh, is Turkish because I live in the western part, which is located in the northern region uh, Turkish people live. And that's the language that you speak? <laughs> no, actually I speak a little Turkish, but uh, I'm originally Persian. I was born and raised in Iran. And about 11 years ago, I moved to Cyprus. And I'm, uh, I started as a student and... Um, since 2012, I'm teaching here. Oh, wonderful. But in the media also, I went to uh, Moscow for a year, then I returned back. Kilian is asking you for something. <laughs> well, anyway, um, it will be interesting uh, to see uh, more about your, your country or your city. Uh, I, I saw that your posts are mainly about your interviews. <laughs> So I don't know if this is like a channel for your, how, how could you call this project? You know, when I started it, it was in the middle of June. I was very bored because, uh, you know, I'm a <laughs> university professor. This is not my job, for example, to interview uh -huh. people. But I was thinking, okay, as a hobby, I can start something. But things got uh, a little serious after that. And <laughs> uh, you know, Cypriots were very nice to me, uh, both Turkish people and Greek people. And I want to do something in return. And I'm trying to bring more artists to Cyprus to have more international events. That's why it would be yeah. uh, so lovely also to have you here to oh. perform uh, Latino music. Yeah, not, that not, would not be Latino, awesome. I mean, right Latino. Yes, no, I, I understand. Anyway, if it's in Spanish, they already call it Latino. But I know that you mean Latino music. Everybody imagine dancing, right? Yes. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm not that type of Latino. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to dance. It's like I feel like I have two <laughs> two left feet, as they say. Uh, I love music, and when I am singing, of course, I move. Uh, and they say, ah, and you said that you didn't sing, you, you didn't dance. And like, I'm not dancing, I'm expressing my songs, <laughs> right? <laughs> because I move, sometimes I, I do a little bit of head banging, not as much, but yes, I do. And um, I move here and there, I jump, I like to uh, kneel down and everything. It's like, I shouldn't stay in one position unless uh, it is like a very, very slow song. <laughs> if it depends on the song. Uh, right now, for example, 
I have this concert that I uploaded on YouTube and I had to stay in one position all the time. It was so hard, uh, but it was because of the camera. It was, uh, it was going to be uh, transmitted on YouTube. Well, no, first on Facebook. And uh, the microphone that, was, that is connected to the, you know, this controller where they receive the audio very clear. Uh, it, it was not wireless. So it's like, oh, this microphone is here, static. So I have to be there. I, I, I moved a little bit my hands and my head, but not as usual as you could see in a concert. Like I could jump, go to the back or to the front. And it's like, it's like sometimes you feel like, it's like you have a, a me, um, muscle meser, me, me memory. Like you you feel like in this part of the song, I should be moving, but I'm not moving. So it's like probably the voice will not come out as well. <laughs> so I was feeling like, ah, oh, more effort than usual. Even if it sounds, by the way, Why? Among your say songs, that? which one is your favorite? Wow, that's a difficult question. Um, I used to love from the singles I released. Uh, my favorite was that slower one, Vacío. Uh, it sounds like a suspense song, and I love it because it's like a very personal song. I talk about these dark moments that, that you can sometimes have and it's very normal, very natural and very important to have because sometimes you need to realize that, that you are feeling very bad to do something about it. So um, and the other ones are love songs and, or, or things like that, like <laughs> breakup songs. And, but this one is like very personal. Also, I love the video. But now from the new songs that I'm releasing, I like all of them, <laughs> you one of them, it's, I'm going to say it's, it's one of the ones I haven't released. So I have uh, a love song coming. Uh, one song, actually the next song that's going to come, it's about, it's about Doctor Who. <laughs> I don't know if you like Doctor Who. So I, I no, got inspired. <laughs> oh, I got inspired in one of the episodes. I will talk more about it when I release it. But yes, and then I have another song that I was so lucky uh, to, to be able to sing um, that uh, a singer, uh, one of the singers here in Mexico, he's not metal, he's a pop singer, but he uh, gave me his song. I mean, he's like the, the, the words and you can sing them. So I'm going to, wow, I'm, way, I'm, I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for the moment. <laughs> yes. John, by the way, he knows. Uh, oh, a lot hello, about John. <laughs> uh, he started as a fan. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure to meet him in person, but uh, is, he's my student right now. He's one of my online students. I teach Spanish to him. So he's a friend and a student. He's, oh, he lives in the United States. Yeah. Thank you, John. Hey, John. <laughs> thank you. Your comments were very interesting. I also received some of my answers through your comments, actually. Oh, thank um, you. Well, uh, he's, he's also a very enthusiastic fan from all the female fronted bands. So if you go to his profile, you can, you can find it, like a directory. <laughs> you can find who is going to be your next, your next interview. <laughs> yeah. I see. And I don't know if you notice or not, but uh, I don't just interview musicians. I interview... Uh, yeah, talented. I saw... Yeah, yeah. And also I saw you speaking languages or, or Russian and things like probably learning Russian. <laughs> so it was like, oh, I should study here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I use uh, 10 languages, but uh, I'm just uh, trying to improve oh. it. In the next 10 years, hopefully I can overcome uh, all the obstacles related to uh, those languages. But as you know, even for Russian itself, it's so hard that uh, it's been that a long truth, time no? I'm studying it. <laughs> but I can never claim that, yes, I speak Russian fluently. Uh -huh. But in you, in you actually lived there, right? So yes, you for went... one year, yeah. But I was uh, teaching there in English, so... <laughs> so you got away with speaking your la <laughs> other languages, yes. Yeah, but I have so many Russian friends even now, so mm -hmm. sometimes I communicate with them in Russian. But still, it's not enough. You should be there all the time. Yeah. We must have a bit of it. Yeah, I don't know if we can do this in Russian. I know I will, get, I will be out of words <laughs> in, a, in a while. You have a very good Russian accent, by the way. That's very nice. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just try to, to do it um, 
as I learned it. But yeah, sometimes when I, when I, well, I have one cover in Russian and people were saying, oh, you have a, a cute accent. And I was like, what accent? <laughs> like, what accent? What are you talking about? <laughs> but uh, it's obvious, of course. I have an accent in English and I should have an accent in other languages. My, uh, even in Spanish, uh, I have the accent of the area where I live. I, I imagine it happens to you too, but I, I'm not able to hear it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Do you know any Spanish? Yeah, I know. I'm actually trying to learn it from uh, El Nombre del Amor at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good plan. Yeah. But probably you will only learn very dramatic phrases. <laughs> yeah, because from the beginning, uh, in the, from the first episode, they started crying from the beginning of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I tell my mom when she's watching the Turkish sub operas. Are they crying all the time? <laughs> Can they just be happy? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but, okay, if, if you have any questions, just let me know. <laughs> sure. Uh, by the way, I usually ask uh, cultural questions from my guests. And what is uh, very interesting for me to know is that, uh, of course, Latino people have many things in common. But what would you say is the difference between Mexican and other Latino people? Well, mm, well, unfortunately, I haven't had many experience uh, talking to other Latino people. But what I can say, what I see from the outside Latino community is that they are more party, <laughs> party inclined. It's like in Mexico, of course, we party, but other places, uh, they, they are dancing all the time or they are very colorful uh, also in the personality it's like i don't know they have to seem happy all the time here in mexico i feel like we are more serious not everyone of course but um specifically here where i live uh, people is very open to welcome you but other people from my country think that we are angry <laughs> because here in the north mainly in the, the north part of the country of Mexico, they we speak a little bit um, dry, or it's like we're not singing the words like other other people do, and uh, they think we're angry. They think that we are angry. So uh, yes, in other in other parts of Latin America, they sing the words a little bit more, even more than in the south of Mexico, and. So here it's like they think we're more serious, but we are always welcoming. We are a family people. It's like we're, our fa the family always stays together here. It's not like in other countries that uh, you, you are 18 and you, you stop <laughs> seeing your parents. No, no, no. Here, even you can see people uh, living with their parents uh, at a very old age. Um, and it is not something that we see as a bad thing. And also, it is very normal here to visit our relatives very, very often. So it has been hard during the COVID not to see, not to see them as much as, as we want. Because, well, you know, here and there, people still sneak around and visit, <laughs> and still visit. But, um, oh, so how can I say it? Probably people in other parts of Mexico, they are, they are more prone to dancing than here. Here they dance, but, it's, but in couples, more like the country banda music and romantic ones. But in the other parts of Latin America, it's more festive. Probably I'm thinking of carnivals and stuff. <laughs> so, um, but I think we share that in common, that we are family people. We always are open to talk to strangers. <laughs> and we, uh, we smile as a hello to everybody. I, I think that this doesn't happen in every culture, right? It's like you smile in the street, you smile to a stranger, and it is not a bad thing. No, it doesn't <laughs> so it, happen in Russia, for example. <laughs> yeah, I read it. I read it. And yeah. it was like, really? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so probably they get scared if you smile at them. So they, for they us, it's scared. just a kind... They just think mm -hmm. we are stupid. <laughs> 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 and, and for us, it's a, like a kind gesture. It's like... Yeah. or wishing you a, a good day like that and it's not a bad thing and we love food we love food <laughs> we love our food we love 
we love people. I mean, it's like even the, even the shy ones here, we are <laughs> we're talking to somebody at some point, and, and that is to be expected. <laughs> but yes, so you're, you are asking, and you're asking, you're asking the person that lives in a, like the northwest of the country, and um, probably you should ask other Mexicans. <laughs> but yes, and that's how I see it. Um, we are festive, but not as colorful. <laughs> our, our parties are mainly in the center and south. They are super colorful about the day of the death. Here in the north, not as much. Uh, but we still know about it. I live uh, three or four hours away to the frontier to the U.S. So it's like may, many of our traditions come from the U.S. Not, not, not as much as from Mexico. So it is also another reason why English t-shirts are, are very much required here because m almost every private school is bilingual and Many people here go to work in the U.S. So yes, English is. I see. So Melissa, Irina, uh, hello, Irina. Irina is a singer from Venezuela, but she lives in Mexico. Hi, Irina. I don't know if she's still here. Irina uh, is a okay. Russian name or Latino name? It's a Russian name, yes. but she is Latin. <laughs> yes, she's Latin. Yeah, her heart is uh, Latino, as I understand. And she sings and she does some dubbing. She, she changes the language of TV shows. She's famous for that. <laughs> I see. And uh, Melissa, let's do something fun. We, in our challenge, we ha in our uh, page, we have a challenge named Crazy Eyebrow. And we try to pull <laughs> one eyebrow up, one down. Can you do that? Yeah. Wow, you do it so good. But not, 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 not that the both. other one. Just the right one, you can do it, right? <laughs> but and with can that you do one, both? You do can so you do good. both? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so you have this side very <laughs> Yeah, I practice very trained. You train. <laughs> <laughs> what about your nose? Can you do this? <laughs> no. No, only this. It's only the nose does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another thing that I like to do sometimes I do it in my concerts is to do music with the hands. So can you do like a hand ocarina? Let's try. Wow. <laughs> it's magic. Oh, it's so cool. I don't know, can it's you like do it? Have you ever tried? <laughs> no. no. Here they also related to the tribes, to our native native people. Yeah, that's so cool. So, Melissa, uh, would you like to add something? Well, uh, keep listening. <laughs> keep, keep supporting your favorite uh, people, not only musicians. But, uh, well, thank you so much Well, to you and to everybody who's here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing us to enter <laughs> to your house or wherever you are right now. Thank you so much. And, well be happy times will change and will be okay sooner than we think <laughs> Melissa, thanks yeah. a lot for being with us today it was totally oh. my pleasure and uh, i wish you luck for your band and same in your for you and your band. writing and oh, i'm looking gracias, forward gracias. to <laughs> finally see you in person to perform in cyprus hopefully someday uh, i'd love to yes let's see how soon can we do that and let's stay in touch. <laughs> sure, sure. But, Maybe the collaboration we talked about, about that uh, uh, music project. Yes. Balso <laughs> Espasiva. <laughs> Ti toge. <laughs> See oh, you. Thank uh, you. Adios. Paka, paka. Adios. That's with Anya. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Melissa. See thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>